Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, the All Compassionate, the All Merciful. Hello, everyone. In this video, we are going to analyze Ghazal number three uh, from Rumi's Divan Shams Tabrizi. Garvande on Manzaram, Bastastazu Chashme Taram, Mandar Jahi Mola Taram, Janat Nashoyat Marmaro. Janat Maro Biruy Uham Du Zahastoham Adu, Man Sukhtam Birangobu, Kufar Ambore Bako. This Ghazal's theme is generally um, seeking forgiveness from God. Rumi starts by talking to his heart, to himself. He opens the poem through regretting the wrongdoings he has done, seeking forgiveness from God, and then the divine grace talk, coming to him. Uh, let's start line by line, and we will see this beautiful beautiful poem. This is, I think, one of the most beautiful ghazals in the entire divan. It's speaking to himself, says, O oh heart, O oh my heart, what have you thought, what have you prepared uh, for the wrongdoings you have done? How are you going to compensate for them? From that side, from the beyond, from God, there has always been loyalty and grace. And from your side, there has always been wrongdoing and disgrace. The second line says, Zansu ya u chandan karam, zinsu khalafi bisho kam, zansu ya u chandan neam, zinsu ya to chandin khatao. From God's side, there has always been grace. But from this side, from your side, oh, oh, there has always been wrongdoing. And disobedience. Zansuya Uchandan Neam. From his side, there has always been blessing, but from your side, there has always been the wrong and guilt. Zinsuya To Chandin Hasat, Chandin Khyaluz and Nepat. Zansuya Uchandan Kashesh, Chandan Chashesh, Chandan Ata. From your side, there has, there has been greed and jealousy. That is, you have been treating people with jealousy and greed with empty thoughts and and with improper bad intentions but from his side there has been divine attraction and granting um, this divine attraction um, deserves to be discussed a little bit in detail in Islamic metaphysics there, this is a concept uh, divine uh, attraction in Farsi it is jazbeh um, so what is happening is after um, invoking God for some time in the mystical journey, the journeyer comes to a level after purifying their hearts, after preparing themselves to receive the divine grace, after going through the formalities of religion, the divine law, the seeker comes to a level to receive what is called jazbe. So uh, jazbe is divine attraction and what is meant by, is, by it is that through the divine grace a spiritual pull comes from the divine something uh, if you look at the literature felt in the chest in the chest a feeling not a thought of nearing god as if you are absorbing into yourself your five senses weaken you are absorbed into yourself and you get nearer and nearer to God. So um, a, a very love-oriented, focus-centered experience. This we could um, uh, like uh, find resonance in ancient Greek times uh, and in Neoplatonist times. Plotinus speaks of it openly. He says like, when I externalize myself to everything around me and when I enter into myself when I absorb into myself I find the one in the center of the soul um, any case this is what uh, Rumi means here it says you are doing all these wrongdoings but uh, contrary to this out of his grace in the face of all your wrongdoings he's sending you his grace he's sending you this divine pull pulling you towards himself Chandin Chashish as then he asks, what, what, why is, uh, what is this all attraction about? Then he answers himself, the divine pull 
has come to take your bitterness and turn it into a sweetness, a spiritual sweetness. It comes to save you from yourself, getting you to the sainthood, closer to the sainthood. As bad pashimam mi shavi, Allah guyam mi shavi, andam tora umi keshat tawara hanat man tora. As jorm tarsam mi shavi, as chaure porsam mi shavi, al nahse tarsan and dera ba khud nemi bini shara. Um, so the general picture here in these two lines that are recited is this uh, you get to a point that you are ashamed and you regret of all the wrongdoings you have done you start invoking God you show your regret you show that I'm regretful Allah says so you start saying Allah 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 God, God, God. That is, you are asking for forgiveness. You are invoking Him. As bad pashi mom mi shavi, Allah ku yam mi shavi. On dam tora u mi keshat tawara hanat man tora. At that moment, He starts pulling you. So from here, we understand that there is one thing that, at least in this context, that comes before jazbe, and that is um, your awakening. The journeyer awakens to the fact that they are not on the right track they have not come to this world to live a materially oriented simple superficial life uh, they get to this point and then they decide to turn around the table and go to the divine get closer to the divine they ask forgiveness they, they make a decision to change their lives entirely and at that moment the grace comes از جرم ترسان می شوی و از چاره پرسان می شوی آن نحس ترسانند را با خود نمی بینی چرا You become regretful You become afraid But why are you not seeing the thing, the being that frightens you at that moment This is a very elegant line He says look, even at that moment when you, when you regret all these wrongdoings It's not you who is regretting it Sometimes God gives you that feeling it's like in Persian we say talangur. Uh, like sometimes God does this to you so that you uh, you awaken um, to the superficiality of the material life. Um, he gives you that feeling of regret. He reminds you of that feeling of well, the, the, this wrongdoing so that you turn back from the way you're going uh, to the divine. And then he asks, when you are when you come to that moment. Why do you think that it's you who is regretting? Why do you not see the being that is bringing you to that moment, putting that feeling into your heart? Even if when you are doing something wrong, the God is still with you, loving you, pulling you, pulling you towards himself. Even at that moment of that bitter feeling, is giving that bitter feeling as a, as a grace, as a medicine, so that you change your life, you change your direction. زین سو کشان سوی خوشان زان سو کشان با ناخوشان یا بگذرد یا بشکند کشتی در این گرد آب ها Amazing, amazing poetry uh, Three lines um, In the first he says um, God closes your eyes And at that moment you are like a dice in his hand You know, what do we do with the dice? We throw it we, sometimes we throw it up, sometimes we throw it on the table. It says, God at times closes your eyes and treats you like a dice. Sometimes uh, like throws you up, th sometimes he throws you down. What does he mean by this? That appears in the second line. Sometimes God intentionally puts the interest of money, gold, and woman into your heart. And sometimes he puts the light of Mustafa, that is another name for the Prophet of Islam, 
sometimes he puts the light of the prophet into your heart so he paints an opposition sometimes you are um, given the obsessive obsessive interest for money for satisfying your lust but sometimes there is spirituality there is the light of the prophet and um, why does he do that um, we could ask Rumi to say well why would God put the thought and the interest and the feeling of money in my heart and that comes in the next line in su kashan su ye khoshan wan su kashan ba na khoshan ya bugzarat ya bishkanat kishti dar in girdapa yes he does that on the one side you have all these negative things on the other side you have the positive things but think of yourself as a ship that passes this stormy stormy ocean um, on this side there are positive things on the other side there are negative things that ship either is going to go through all these difficulties and reach the destination or it's gonna get destroyed and sink so the picture that we see here is that yes god sometimes gives you those feelings says rumi uh, either positive or negative but they are given to you as a test to, to, to test your endurance your faith your strength on how you can handle these things everybody could um, be performing their best in like under normal circumstances in rumi's mind so sometimes you are put under difficulties uh, so that you are tested and this resonates with the quran in um, chapter 2 verses 155 156 we have god says we test you with sickness with with the loss of your soul with the loss of your finances with the death of your beloved ones and you should be patient so the picture here is that in philosophy we have this concept called the problem of evil why is there evil in the world if god is all-powerful omniscient and uh, all-knowing all, all, all good if there is such a good god why is there evil um, here the christian and islamic um, answer to this question is uh, quite quite similar uh, in, in the verses that i just recited it says yes those evils are put forth by god but they are to test you and we see this poem resonating with this quranic passage um, Rumi is going to add another powerful element there, um, like amidst all these difficulties, challenges, the tests, the trials um, that you, you need to show yourself. There comes a powerful element that makes Rumi so universal, and that element is the powerful element of love. We will get into that, and that is, I think, one of one more reason that he is, resonates so much with Christianity um as a muslim thinker like you, you you see that his thought is deeply rooted in love as is the case in christianity فردوس خواهی دام دادمت خاموش رها کن این دعا گفتان این خواهم نه آن دیدار حق خواهم ایان گر هفت بحرات شود من در روم بحر لقا رومی سجست تو دی سپریچول جرنیر ترامبلر دیت یو شود پری سو مچ این سالتود یو شود مورن ات نایت سو رات فرم دی سکای یو هیر دی وایس then he gives us a story uh, from um, a prophet, Prophet Shu'aib. This prophet was crying so much, was invoking and worshipping God in silence and at night so much that finally um, the voice came from the heaven, from, from, from the skies. گر مجرمی بخشیدمت و از جرم آمرزیدمت فردوس خواهی دادمت خاموش رها کن این دعا If you are a sinner, fine, I forgive you. That voice says so god says to this prophet fine enough stop the prayer if you are a sinner i forgive you if you want heaven i grant you and he names a special part in heaven that is called ferdos i i grant you ferdos i grant you the, the highest station in heaven 
um, fine, all yours, stop the prayer. And this part is magnificent. And the Shu'ab says, the Prophet says, I neither want this nor that. I only want to see you. That's all I want. If the seven seas become full of fire, I will cross all these all those seas to come to you. Whatever difficulty you set in my path, fine, no problem. I will cross them. I will challenge myself with those difficulties to get to you. I don't want your heaven. I don't want all those high stations. I want only and only you. So the Prophet says, um, if I am not able to see him, to see God, I don't want your heaven. I'm better off in the hell. The heaven without seeing his face is nothing but hell for me. Very love oriented, very beautiful. I am fed up with this world. I am fed up with the material world. I want to cross the higher worlds to unite with the divine. So even if you offer to grant me heaven, if I'm not be able, if I'm not gonna be able to see you, I don't want that heaven. I'm better off at hell. I will dwell in there happily. Show yourself. I don't want your heaven. That is the picture uh, that Rumi paints in these lines. Line 16 says, "Goftand bari kam giri, ta kam nagardat mopsiri, ke chasm na bi na shabat, chum bogzarat az had boka." گفتد دو چشمم آقبت خواهند دیدن آن صفت هر جزو من چشم می شود کی غم خورم من از اما بر آقبت این چشم من محروم خواهد ماندن تا کور گردد آن بسر کونیس لایق دوست را They tell the prophet um, well at least cry less because crying a lot for extended periods of time is dangerous you might end up being blind and he says look if I am finally going to see him, to see my beloved, to see God, all parts of my body would be I to see him. Shouldn't worry about me going blind. Or if these eyes do not deserve seeing the beloved, I'm better off with being blind than uh, having these eyes and finally not seeing him. You see, uh, the, the Rumi's poetry when it comes to um, speaking of the divine, is very love-oriented. He takes all these challenges, he takes all these evil in the world, all the trials, all the tests, and he accepts, he willingly gets into all these difficulties, still he's happy with those. Um, you know, we, we will see this in our uh, examination of Divan. In many of the places, he accepts these willingly and happily. He says, look, these difficulties are nothing for me. Um, it's a love story. It's a love game. The beloved wants to put me into difficulties. Fine, I will do that. No worries. And the difficulty is sweet for me. Um, that's what makes Rumi, one of the reasons that makes Rumi so popular and so universal. And در جهان هر آدمی باشد فدای یار خود یار یکی انبان خون یار یکی شم از یا چون هر کسی در خرد خود یاری گزید از نیک و بد ما را در غایت که خود فانی کنیم از بحر لا Everybody takes a beloved and one would take a bag of blood as their beloved and one takes a brilliant son uh, but still it shouldn't be so um, taken at like the face value because in other parts of Rumi's thought and Persian mystical poetry, we see that uh, in Sufism, in Islamic mysticism, even the earthly, earthly loves take you to the divine love. If you are consciously thinking of all the mirrors in the world as manifestations of the divine, you have a love in your life. That love, if you treat them sacredly, aware that that person has a divine soul takes you closer to God. 
because in Quran we have when min ruhi. God says when I proportioned him, Adam, I breathed my spirit into him. So that's why in Islam we say like the human uh, human soul is divine. So if you recognize this divine soul within human beings, and if you treat them accordingly, um, if you when you when you love someone, you 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 are consciously reminding yourself you're conscious that there is a divine soul within this person even that love takes you uh, to the real love the worldly love i mean loving someone is called metaphorical love in Persian mystical poetry and uh, it's like a mirror but still if you are conscious of the fact that i just told you you realize that these mirrors reflect uh, the divine face um, in this way this love takes you to the real love چون هر کسی در یار در خورد خود یاری گزید از نیک و بد ما را دریغ آید که خود فانی کنیم از بحر الله so if everybody takes a beloved uh, in their lives it is inappropriate for us to take um, superficial unimportant loves as our aim or what we engage with meaning that we should be taking the divine love as our target so there is one more line, but that's not um, central to this uh, discussion. Uh, so I'm going to end, end, end this here. Actually, there are two lines, but like I said, not central. I hope you liked this uh, this this poem. I did. I, I have been uh, reading this poem for years, and I still um, have the sweetness when I'm reading it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like and share to support, to support the channel. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you soon in the next video.